Welcome to Kubera. Today we're discussing seized Bitcoins and what exactly happened to them because I saw a couple questions about that and with some of the recent news, especially if you've been uh, in touch with my other channel, you know that in Germany and uh, the Dutch government and the American government, well, they've been taking some uh, nice big chunks out of the Bitcoin pool as in the Dutch government supposedly has collected over $3 million worth of Bitcoin from one source and over $8 million from another source. Now, those figures are constantly rising with the Bitcoin price. So in total, and, you know, there's still other places as well. So in total, I think a nice big chunk of like $12 million or so worth of Bitcoins is just chilling in certain wallets right now. And it's going to be there most likely until... Uh, a couple months from now, there's going to be some auctions. These are government auctions. This is just like anything else, really. So let's say a criminal is arrested and there's enough evidence against him that he's going to go to, uh, you know, the, the slammer for a long time. They're going to take his Hummer. They're going to take his house. They're going to take all of his assets, basically. And that is essentially what is happening here. So a couple years ago with uh, the SRs, a little takedown with uh, DPR's arrest, that was around 144000 Bitcoins, 144,000 Bitcoins. That is an insane amount of Bitcoins. And mind you, this was in 2014 when there was much less traffic and much less hype about cryptocurrencies. But still, there was individuals who were definitely interested. There was a lot less exchanges back then. And buying bulk Bitcoins, as in thousands or tens of thousands, is just unheard of. Of course, nobody got the whole sum, which was uh, 140,000 or whatever. But the biggest auction, I think, because it was split up into multiple auctions, okay? And the biggest auction was for 30,000 Bitcoins. And you had multiple people, actually organizations and people, some billionaires, some VCs, some uh, weird you know, investment capital funds, some Bitcoin exchanges, all this stuff. They signed up and to get into a government auction, first of all, you have to sign up and wait a little bit till you're approved. So of course, no criminal record, none of that stuff. Have a valid reason for why you want to purchase these Bitcoins probably. What are you going to do with these Bitcoins? And as soon as you're approved, you're able to come into this. And also there was an auction fee, I think of $200,000 first, but then it was dropped to 50,000 or 25,000 anyways. So you of course have to have millions of bucks pretty much in your bank account. Think about it this way. If you can afford, if you have an American Express black card or a Chase Platinum card, well, whatever the, the you, you know what it is. Anyways, if you can afford one of those and you have one of those, you're probably the type to be approved for this auction. So these were bulk auctions. I'm not sure about the pricing exactly, but I'm guessing they, they got a pretty good deal. And especially with these amount of Bitcoins, uh, they were tell talking about a couple of VCs and a couple of the investors. Most of them probably held on to a large majority of those Bitcoins. And now, you know, this was back when Bitcoin was around 600 bucks. Now, if they held on to at least a large majority, because that is a lot, a lot of Bitcoin to sell, to go through. And I think, I think shortly after they bought, the prices went up a little bit, a couple percent. But if they held on to it where it's currently heading, yeah, I mean, you know, 2,800 bucks. Holy moly, that is uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of profit that we're talking about. They are making an incredible amount of money. And pretty much with this, there's probably going to be an auction as well. Millionaires are going to go into it. They're going to try and outbid each other. And then, you know, it's kind of like, hopefully, hopefully, the government will approve of that. And once you have that, boom, you're locked in and you're able to do whatever you want with them. Well, within the, uh, with regards to the law, of course. But yeah, personally, I think this is great because if you are approved for one of these and there is, there aren't many auctions like this, of course. But these are becoming more and more commonplace with certain events happening around the world. And it really does sting a little bit when you're trying to buy Bitcoins and you, you're having problems with one Bitcoin or two Bitcoins, let alone like 10 or 50 or 100. And you have to make some connections. You seriously have to have a lot of trust with these people. And especially 
if there's like no identification or no verification for you know certain purposes certain routes as maybe some people aren't comfortable with handing out their driver's license for uh bulk amounts you know in the tens of thousands of dollars or more it's very very difficult and also getting a good price on that because everybody who buys and sells bitcoin you know well at least a large majority of the people who have bitcoin like to hoard it because of the price increases on top of whatever percentage they make at selling bitcoin so you're able to sell bitcoin for 10 percent 15 percent even all the way up to 30 percent above the market rate and people are like well i'm surprised i go on pax floor and local bitcoins are all of this stuff and it's just like well i don't get these incredible prices like whoa, not incredible in a good way like just oh my goodness craziness it's like you want to buy some bitcoins that's it but you have to give away verification on all this and it is a very long and tedious process but you know it weeds out some people and the rest who stick with it usually get the bitcoin and then they realize oh wow i can i can make some money off of this too because the people holding the bitcoins they want the pool to get smaller and the price of bitcoins to go up so they like to keep as much of the bitcoins as they can they want to have a large chunk of the pool so when it's time for them to cash out they have a lot of money and they'll be cashing out over a long period of time now i do hope in the future going into you know cryptocurrency space the crypto sphere woo, with a lot of the hype a lot of new investors a lot of newbies coming in i do hope hope that uh, me i don't know about coinbase i mean i just made a video about coinbase but you know one of these exchanges will maybe a new exchange will rise above the rest and will allow the opportunity to just be able to purchase bulk bitcoins you know lower fees it's going to be fast on top of bitcoins you have all the major coins such as ripple ethereum litecoin which by the way we will be doing videos on those pretty soon so definitely hit that like button and stay subscribed my friends and thank you for all the support but anyway so that's pretty much it that's how auctions work at least for all this stuff and i will probably be i will probably be seeing a lot more of these and especially with certain busts where it's not just bitcoin anymore it's ethereum him. It's uh, Monero is kind of a tricky one because you don't really know how much is going on with that. But of course, it, it, it's not like nobody knows you're able to sell Monero. There's Zen Cash, which Zen Cash was uh, some of these cryptocurrencies were used more than others for certain things. Let's just put it that way, okay? So, from the original SR, most of the auction winners were just VCs and they used it to create their own exchanges which i don't know maybe hopefully they're doing well right now i guess they probably are but hopefully just because you're doing well doesn't mean you become uh, naughty naughty to your customers such as the certain monopolies at the moment so anyways for those of you also curious how long these this stuff takes i mean it's the government so with all of that it really does take quite a while with with the uh d dpr auction that seriously lasted from 2014 to 2015 and these were just multiple auctions. I mean, I think like one, two, two per month or something like that. But that takes a while. I mean, holy moly. And this was months after everything was seized, of course. So with this current bust that's going on, you're probably going to see it next year or something. So it's a little bit weird. But hey, you got to get improvement and all this. You know how it is with the government. I mean, you're trying to get citizenship or whatever. And then it gets all freaky loop-de-loop. -loop. Also with the Bitcoins, uh, the governments are trying to get more control under the situation i'm sure some of the bitcoins some of the bitcoins aren't just auctioned off for cash I, there's got to be a certain amount that are just being held of course I, I i totally forgot about that there has to be an amount that's being held because we don't know how much the governments have we don't know how many wallets we can't really trace it we, we even if they admitted we can't believe them fully not that you want to go all conspiracy theory mode but still i mean if you're a government and you see what's going on with the crypto sphere it's kind of like of course they have probably hundreds of millions of dollars into this if not more but still it's uh, it's a little bit interesting because with the crypto world you have billionaires who are more powerful than the government certain governments of course now most of the people playing in this are whales it doesn't matter whether you're a billionaire or government or non-government association these whales some of them like to do short-term stuff but most of it is long-term holds and they 
care about a lot of things. It's multiple different factors at play at once. So if you're wondering like, well, how, how does a whale make money? How do they profit? I, I don't fully understand. There's different tactics. Some are legal, some are a little bit uh, gray area. They manipulate the prices a little bit for Bitcoins and altcoins and all this stuff. That's why you have such volatility with this. But hey, you have to be here every single day to understand what's going on fully and even then you don't know what's happening behind closed doors you don't fully understand why a simple little rumor caused like a $300 price fluctuation anyways where do you guys think Bitcoin will go next will it go 3,000 will it go 1,000 who knows and if you're planning on investing on Bitcoins or in Bitcoin oh my goodness anyways definitely stay tuned to the channel thanks so much for watching and we shall see you guys again have a good one Peace, peace, infinite waters. Woo! No, no, crypto. Buy crypto. Sell crypto. Hold crypto. Hoddle.